Hello and welcome to News Click. As early as 2018, the Chennai based NGO Arupo Riyakam raised the Tamil Nadu Skoll scam, which was to the tune of 6,000 crores and more. And recently, since the release of the Hindenburg Papers, the issue has once again made news. The papers said that the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence revealed there was a huge over-evaluation of coal by the Adani Group to the extent of 50% to 100%. So in this context, uh, the Arapo Riyakam has once again asked the DMK-led government to look into the matter and to ensure that its electoral promise is met and to investigate the previous regime's financial scams. To speak on the matter, we have with us Mr. Jairam Venkatesh, the founder of Arupo Riyakam. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, sir, thank can you. you yes, sir? Can you begin by uh, telling us why did the AIADMK led Tamil Nadu government purchase the overpriced coal to the Adani Group since 2012? Tamil Nadu's uh, electricity board called Tanjat Coal. Uh, procured these coal. These are primarily imported coals from Indonesia. And uh, as we know, the Tamil Nadu runs several thermal power plants uh, in North Chennai, Metur, and Tutukri, and so on. So for these plants, at least 40 to 50 percent of the coal that is used are imported coals. And to import these uh, coal, uh, what happened was that there, were, there seems to have been a very clear-cut collusion between the government and certain uh, private contractors, what has happened is that, in fact, CAG has very clearly pinpointed uh, about the way in which the tender conditions have been framed in, to make sure just a handful of three or four people can participate in it. And using that, they have done a lot of manipulation over time. So what has happened is that for even for a tender, where the tender value is just 100 crores uh, or 150 crores, they have asked for turnover condition of almost 1,000 crores. So this ensured that a lot of medium level players are ruled out of the competition and only a selected bunch of people like Adani, uh, Chetinad Logistics, Knowledge Systems, you know, there are these three or four companies, MSTC, uh, these are three or four companies which are able to participate. Now that created the platform for the pollution very easily, since they had to manage only with a very handful of people who can alone participate. So what has happened is that the, the coal that was imported, now uh, the, the Tangent Co very clearly knows that the Indonesia government every month releases a, a market price of how much, what is the price of coal. So if they had just compared, uh, they, they very well know that uh, what is the market price and how, what is the quotation that these people are giving. Between 2012 to 2016 alone, 2.44 crores of metric tons of coal was imported. And out of this, 50, almost 49%, uh, close to 50% was given to Adani alone. And what we found was that in all these tenders, it was, uh, if, if you look at the average, at least, uh, it, it was somewhere around $20 more than the market rate per metric ton. So we had compared tender wise. There were some tenders which were $10 to $15, but many of the tenders were $15 to $20 more than the market rate. And there was another comparison with, that we had made as well, which is with Tamil Nadu Newsprint Paper Limited, which also purchases coal, imported coal which also purchases the same quality of coal that Tangetco is purchasing, which is 6,000 kilocalorie. You know, there is a moisture level that is defined. There is a sulfur level. There are different these things. And it is almost the same. Uh, in fact, if you have to say uh, uh, TNPL is slightly higher quality, maybe. That's what we can say, right? So therefore, TNPL, in spite of the very similar quality, had purchased coal almost $20 less than Tangetco at the same point of time. Uh, we had compared in 2014, we had compared in 2015. In fact, uh, if you look at the days, there were just a two day or three day gap between the purchase of these people. So it was very clear that the O invoicing has happened. And as you rightly pointed out, the DRI has clearly found as well that there is a 50 to 100% over invoicing. They have mentioned Tangetco, they have mentioned Adani groups and 
some of these other groups that has participated as well. So this has, you know, uh, created a huge loss. This placed a huge burden on the exchequer uh, to the tune of, you can calculate if it is $20 per metric ton for 2.44 crore metric ton, how much this would be. So we had calculated that. And there is a second type of loss that has happened, which is on the uh, quality of coal. So on the quality of coal, CAG has found out they had checked one third of the consignments. In one third of the consignments, customs had also checked for the quality of the coal. In their quality certificate, they had mentioned it as 4,000 to anywhere between 4,000 to less than 6,000 kilocalorie for different consignments. Whereas for the same consignment, Tangent Coal marked as 6,000 kilocalorie. So therefore, they calculate the difference in quality for the same consignment, which means Tangent Co uh, quality certificate seems to have been fudged, seems to have been uh, faked, uh, you know, in terms of the quality. And therefore, they calculated a loss of 800 crores on one third of the consignment alone, which, has, which was checked randomly, right? So therefore, if you look at the entire set of consignment, it is estimated close to 2,400 crores. So if you put, to, put together the pricing loss as well as the quality loss, put together, it comes to 6,066 crores. And therefore, this entire amount of loss that has happened, we have documented very clearly. We have attached all the evidence. We have got all the documents through Right to Information Act, uh, the purchase orders of the TNPL, the purchase orders of the Tangent Co. And uh, the, the public information, Indonesian market price was, has been public information. So we've got that. So we have done, submitted all of this to the CBI, to the uh, you know Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption in 2018. But until now, there's been no action that has been taken in terms of investigating uh, Adani or others or the Tangent Co officials who have been involved in this. Why did the previous government uh, make such a big scam? Did they have some gains out of it? Yes, Why did they? In fact, that, in fact uh, we have, uh, when we inquired within uh, with various, see, uh, some of these scams, uh, they, they come out primarily because there are honest officials within the government. They know what is happening within the government. So what we, what we heard is that there was a very clear cut collusion between uh, public servants uh, uh, and the corporates that were supplying the coal. And uh, there were a lot of gains that were made by some of these public servants through these deals, number one. Number two, uh, we must understand that uh, bulk, you know all these payments were made uh, not just within the country. Many of them have been made outside the country. For example, the Adani Group, which participated, was Adani Global PT Limited, which was in Singapore. So the payment was made to Singapore. And now we are seeing in the Hindenburg and other reports that you know these overevaluated coal uh, diamond trading. A lot of these scams have happened and. It raises a very important question that when there are so much of shell companies that have been floated outside the country, whether these gains that were made uh, illegally uh, from our electricity boards have been parked outside in through these various shell companies and then whether it is being brought back into the Adani public enterprises and other things. Right? So, number one, all these people have made plenty of gains. Plenty of gains that are illegal in nature. Not only that, we must understand that the Tamil Nadu Electricity Board is suffering from a heavy loss of 1.5 lakh crores. And recently, the Tamil Nadu Electricity Board had increased the tariff, placed these losses on the public. So therefore, it is the public that are directly suffering because of these scams. And uh, we, we, you know, uh, the, the action, in fact, no action has been taken so far, primarily because there are these heavy by public servants, the senior level public servants, such as even IAS officers who seem to have been involved in this scam. So therefore, uh, the government is not willing to equate. We have also included the name of the then minister, Natham Vishwanathan. Uh, you know, we have provided some of the details. We, we heard that, you know, there is a large cricket stadium that has been built uh, in Natham. Uh, which is uh, through his very close friend. And uh, we had placed these uh, evidences as well to the DVAC and said, you must prove the link uh, of where money came for an engineering college to build a cricket stadium of almost 100 crores. So therefore, 
all these have been provided for them to inquire but so far uh, very little has happened with respect to the inquiry uh, cbi has not even initiated uh, anything so far the directorate of vigilance and anti corruption has also uh, in the previous government when they were there they tried to hush up and close it immediately and the current government even after several requests they did not uh, you know pursue the complaint uh, so far uh, so only recently after all this has come out uh, we are hearing they may take it up but uh, we still don't have any confirmation so far. you already mentioned about the loss that the electricity board is going through and as well as the increase in tariffs uh, is there anything else you would like to uh, mention as the impact of this scam a large uh, scam a scam as large as this see what we have to understand is that in tamil nadu alone we are talking about a 6000 crore loss and this has not happened just in tamil nadu it has happened throughout the country in various electricity boards the same modus operandi has been followed in various uh, places uh, so therefore uh, the total quantum of loss for example whatever dri with respect to pricing alone they they estimated as somewhere around 29000 crores so is what we heard so therefore and if you look at the quality uh, the quality in, in terms of quality what whatever loss has happened i i think this is going to be somewhere around 50000 crores throughout the country uh, in, if you include pricing and quality so this means a lot of electricity boards in the country which are public sector enterprises are made to suffer at you know through these scams and uh, you know it it may take many many years for these public sector uh, companies to even get back now there is talk of you know you privatize electricity because uh, they are not able to do a good job just imagine that these electricity boards are you know uh, uh, the, the money from these electricity boards are taken to these to many of these private corporates uh, you know in illegally in term for just doing corruption and so on and tomorrow if these private people enter the electricity and if they are going to supply what will happen you know uh, the tariffs will keep, keep on increasing this what what can happen you know there is a wonderful opportunity there was a wonderful opportunity for the electricity boards over the last few years we must understand that for example in tamil nadu if I, if i take tamil nadu in 2013 14 we our um, demand of electricity was 14000 megawatts even today the demand hasn't increased much so over the last 9 10 years if you look at the demand of electricity the demand has not increased if you look at the supply of electricity supply of uh, you know electricity that is available you may you, you will be able to see that the price of coal decreased between 2012 to 2016 significantly and uh, the, the rate was on the lower side for many years only in the recent last two years it has increased tremendously if you look at the uh, rate at which uh, private thermal power plants uh, produced and gave electricity in the market it was 2.5 rupees so the power the cost of power became cheaper the solar power has become cheaper so this, there is a lot of supply at a cheaper rate over the last few years on the demand side your demand hasn't increased much so this is a wonderful opportunity for the most for most of the electricity boards to get their electricity boards from negative or loss to break even stage but unfortunately the reverse has happened which is they have gone into lakhs of crores of losses like tangent board so which means the only reason this has happened is because of many of these corruption that has been happening in these electricity boards so therefore and they have to now focus on getting back these money from these big corporates that has looted the public's money and only that way we can make sure that the the lost money can be used for uh, you know uh, at least uh, meeting out some of the losses of these electricity boards otherwise the tariff will keep on increasing and the public has to face the heat continuously coming back to tamil nadu so specific to tamil nadu why exactly is the dmk government hesitant to inquire into the uh, alleged scam because it happened between 2012 and 2016 when the admk was a ruling party so and you have been appealing repeatedly why is that what is the response you are getting from the dmk government there are uh, Uh, there is a stark silence that we are seeing from the dmk government uh, they are not 
you know, in fact, the electricity minister Sindhil, Sindhil Balaji has not even spoken a word about Adani uh, or other people, uh, you know, with respect to these coal import scams and other things. Uh, our chief minister hasn't spoken about it with respect to the Tamil Nadu coal import scam. In fact, in 2018, he gave a statement that CBI must investigate it. But after he came to power, he has the power to order an investigation into the coal scam. But he hasn't done that as well. So what we are, I mean, what we are seeing is that uh, this seems to be twofold. Number one, they also want to safeguard many of the senior officials. Uh, who, who are part of the current system as well, who are, were part of the scam at that point of time, who are part of the system right now as well, they want to save them. So therefore, there is a, a senior level uh, a bureaucratic lobby that, that is preventing the investigation as well. The number two, Tamil Nadu government is even until today, some of these people are still participating in the tenders of uh, Tamil Nadu Electricity Board like Adani and other people. They have signed a MOU with them on other projects and so on. So they don't want to actually, uh, you know, take action on Adani uh, or other people in terms of FIR and charge sheet them and so on. This is, seems to be the case. So therefore, their entire, uh, uh, you know, oppose, opposition uh, with respect to this whole thing seems to be only on, uh, on the political side, wherein they are demanding JPC at the central level. They are saying their joint parliamentary committee is needed to probe the Hindenburg research and other things. But on the other side, when they directly have power in their hand to uh, register a FIR, uh, investigate it, charge it, prosecute uh, all the offenders who have looted the public money to the tune of thousands of crores, they are refusing to do. So this is this double standard is what we have been questioning the DMK government of. We want them to, you know, uh, uh, Please see the investigation can in criminal law investigation can start only after registration of it, and therefore they they have not been uh, even willing to start it. And another thing is, Mr. Sindhil Balaji in August 2021 came up with a finding saying that 2.38 uh, lakh tons of coal is missing from these power plants from our power plants, and that they are going to order an inquiry into this whole thing. Now they have gone completely silent on that inquiry report as well. Because what we are hearing is that uh, this lost coal, this missing coal, is primarily because of the imported coal that had come. And uh, this loss seems to have happened between the time of transit from the ship to the, uh, uh, you know, uh, to the power plant. Uh, so for which the same private contractors will be held liable. And therefore, uh, you know, after understanding this, Mr. Sindhil Balaji seems to have gone silent. In the recent interview, he said they have sent to vigilance and vigilance will do it and so on. Now, what happened to your own department inquiry? You inquired it. You, are, you have to tell the people. In fact, he questioned the previous minister, Tangamani, saying that if he had actually done an inquiry, as he says, uh, what, why, why was the coal loss? What is the reason for the uh, missing coal? Uh, you know, what action has been taken on people who did that and all that. Now, the same questions Mr. Sindhil Balaji has to answer because what happened to his inquiry report? What happened to, what are the, who are the officials he has suspended or dismissed in the last one and a half years, uh, you know, through department action? And uh, can he, why is the vigilance and anti-corruption, if he, they have actually sent it to vigilance and anti-corruption for doing investigation, why has the vigilance and anti-corruption not even registered an FIR on the missing coal aspect? Because there are two issues. One is the transit coal is being lost, for which also the private contractors will be liable. Number two, when low, lower quality coal comes in, you know, you have to add more of it in order to generate the same amount of electricity. So if you have to generate one megawatt, you have to use more quantity of 4,500 kilocalories instead of the 6,000 kilocalories. So they had on record said that all these are 6,000 kilocalories. So therefore, the, if they add more than what is required for 6,000 kilocalories, then questions will come tomorrow why the efficiency of the plant is so low when you are putting in 6,000 kilocalories. Therefore, to avoid it, they had poured more of the 4,500 kilocalories into the power plant, but 
they have accounted only for whatever quantity is required for 6% yield. So this difference will be here is also the reason for the missing coal. And so the second reason is there is a lot of moisture that is added uh, when, during the transit. And therefore, uh, you know, that is another reason. They, they spray these coal with a lot of water uh, before the, it enters the plant. And uh, using that, they have added the weight. And uh, once it enters the next day, uh, the weight will be lost. So this is another methodology that seems to have been used. So these are things that we hear from people inside the tangent. Uh, you know, have, who has said that how this is, what is the reason for this missing call? Now, Mr. Sindhil Balaji has to say, whatever now I'm saying may be true, may not be true, because we do not have evidences to say that this is what has happened uh, in terms of the missing call. But this is, these are the things that we hear from inside. So, Mr. Sindhil Balaji should tell the public uh, whether Jaira Magnetization is lying on this, uh, you know, what, what is the truth behind the missing call then? So, he he has to come out and say openly, he has to say who are the officials he has prosecuted, who are the contractors he has blacklisted on this. No blacklisting has happened, no suspension has happened, no FIR has happened. This shows the political will of the DMK to take action on corruption. And we really hope that in the coming uh, days that they will really look into the coal scam because the, the, the sheer... Uh, quantity of uh, the value that we are talking about is really big and it's a huge loss. So we really hope in the coming days investigation will uh, happen in this man matter. So uh, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for joining us and giving us such deep, in-depth details on what exactly uh, has likely been happening, like you said. That we cannot say exactly that's what happened, but likely been happening in this so, the entire... With respect, with respect to the 6,000 uh, crore scam, it is very clear with the evidences. Okay. With respect to the okay. missing coal, they have to come out. In fact, part of the missing coal is because of the imported coal quality loss is what we hear. And okay. therefore, they have to come out with very clear uh, say, say, you know, uh, inquiry report uh, saying that how exactly it happened. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you.